Now that we've played all the decks in the format, we gotta rank them. What goes where? So this is our tier list. Tier one, this is your, your A tier decks. These are your, these are the best decks in the format decks. They're the ones you're gonna see all the time. You can expect to win tournaments with these. They have good matchups against pretty much everything. Maybe they have a bad matchup here or there, but basically solid decks. Tier two, this is the tier right below tier one. So these decks are still good, but they are noticeably worse than the tier one decks. Oh, you can still bring them and you know expect to win tournaments with them, but you are the data shows that they are worse. Or they might be a deck that's in tier one, but a worse version of it. Then tier 2.5, this is your, they're just a little bit worse than the tier two decks, but they're not so much worse that you would rank them like in a whole other tier down. Again, you can still maybe win some games with the tier 2.5 decks, but they're a just they're just that little tiny bit worse than the tier 2 decks. Maybe they're missing some crucial component to make the deck actually function well. That's what we've got. Then the tier 3 decks. These are your these decks are not very good. You can still win with them. You know, you might get lucky and actually win a tournament with them. Maybe you run hot, maybe you just face good matchups or maybe they're like a you're you're a gambler's deck. Like if you just hit your good matchups with them then you win. But run into any sort of problems, then you lose, they're inconsistent, that's tier three. And then F tier is like, these decks just suck. They're just terrible, no one should play them. So, uh, eight rack, I'm gonna put in tier two. It's pretty good actually, it's much better than I thought it would be, but it's still noticeably a step below the tier one decks. Then we've got the uh, Food Ristocat deck. I think the Food Ristocat deck is almost tier one. Maybe the Lonus version's better. I haven't played the Lonus version, so I don't know. But I will put this in tier two. It's really good. It has a combo that has... It's very, kind of similar to Yawgmoth in that it's a Court of Calling. You can find all the creature pieces combo deck. But unlike Yawgmoth, the, compo the main component card, Sam, doesn't draw you a million cards and it doesn't kill stuff. However, all of the combo creature pieces are easily found. They're all cocoable and having one and two mana creatures is much easier on cord, and Ranger Captain can actually go find your combo pieces now. Much better than like Ranger Captain in say Heliod where you can only find Mana Dorks or Ballista. Affinity, also in tier two. Not much more needs to be said about that. Ad Nauseam. Ad Nauseam has it rough. It has to assemble a lot of things. The format is substantially faster than when it used to exist, and the lack of Simeon Spirit Guide means you need more mana to go off, you need more cards to go off. I would put it into tier 2.5. It's not quite bad enough to be tier 3. So this is the uh, All Will Be One deck slash Ponza, but let's just call it All Will Be One. This is tier 3. All Will Be One as a 5 mana enchantment that doesn't do anything, coupled with the 1 mana quest repair flame that also doesn't do anything. You have these two cards, one of which is quite expensive to cast. They do absolutely nothing without the other one in play, and even when you assemble both, you still need a way to damage your opponent. It always feels just worse having them than just other good value cards. Amulet Titan, tier one, obviously. It's one of the best decks in the format. Assault Loam. Assault Loam is tier 2.5. And the reason is that if you play against a deck where the shocks from the seismic assault don't matter, or your like Ren and Sloger loops don't really matter, like if, if Beseju isn't actually good against your opponent, then all of the value stuff that the deck is doing is not good. So the deck is like tier two against the things where the cards matter, but against everything else, it's like a tier 2.5 .5 deck. Bant Coco. Bant Coco is tier three. It's much worse than what it used to be. The format is so much faster and the card quality is so much higher that basically outside of Witness, Ephemerate, Time Warp loops, everything else in the deck is kind of mediocre. The deck would need a substantial rehaul in order to get it out of tier three. Belcher, Belcher's tier three. Belcher has the problem of it runs into decks that it can't beat. So it just like basically can't beat counter spells. And I know it has Pact of Negation. It has like Veil of Summers in the sideboard. Basically, if you run into counter spells, you lose. If you run into Karn the Great Creator, you lose. And it also just you need a lot of cards in your opening hand and you need a very specific combination of them in order to turbo out the, the Belcher as fast as possible. You need to not lose to aggro in the meantime. Has significant problems. Same thing with the blue-white Belcher deck. 
Blue White Belcher, significant problems. It's probably even worse than regular Belcher because it's slower and it's hit more by artifact hate cards. It does have the side win of Selective Memory plus Thassa's Oracle, which can get you out of spots that Belcher wouldn't be able to win in. So you can go off with less mana sometimes than the Belcher requires, but it has essentially the same issues. Mono Black Burn or Rakdos Burn. We didn't actually play this deck, but we played against it. It seems pretty good, but I'm going to put it in 2.5 tier because it's basically just worse than regular burn. And there's definitely matchups where its game plan doesn't work so well. So most of its spells are less efficient than regular burn spells. And like Sleeper Agent, for example, Sleeper Agent is absolutely terrible if you're playing against an aggro deck. And a lot of times you need multiple things to come together. Like you need your Forbidden Orchards to make them enough creatures that the Rakdos charms burn them out, but not die yourself fast enough when you're giving them all these creatures. It's really bad to give creatures to like Yogmoth, for example. So I'd put it there. Blue Moon. Blue Moon is 2.5. It is worse than Murktide. It's worse than Blue White Control. There's basically no reason to play Blue Moon over those other decks, but it's still playing powerful things. It's still playing Subtlety and Fury and the One Ring and Counter Spells, but it's just worse than those other decks. Boggles? Boggles really has it rough. It's tier 2.5, but man, like getting your main auras forced of Force of Vigor, Force of Negation, there's more Leyline Bindings and Prismatic Endings that kill enchantments than ever before. So you can still kill people. You can still Tron up your you can still Voltron up your one uh, Boggle guy, but there's so much just additional removal than what used to exist. And additionally, it gets side-hated by other decks being popular in the format. So for example, Creativity is one of the top decks, and that means a lot of decks are playing Engineered Explosives, and that incidentally hits Boggles. Amulet Titan is one of the most popular decks in the format, which means tons of people are playing Force of Vigor, and that hits Boggles. Uh, Boomer Jund, Tier 2. It's got the problem of it's just not as good as Scam or Elementals. So it's not as good at like pressuring your opponent and doing broken early stuff as Scam is. And it's not as good at playing the value game as a deck like Coffers or uh, Elementals is. Burn, Tier 1. Calibrated Blast, Tier 2. Among the Glass Cannon decks, I think Calibrated Blast is the best one. It's the hardest to stop since it plays entirely on the stack and it requires so little mana. It's not Belcher where you need seven. You don't have to resolve a permanent and then have it not die and that, or be able to activate something. You don't have to mill your whole deck over and then play Oracle. You just get Calibrated Blast and blast your opponent. And it is surprisingly resilient to like counter spells because you can play original Busaju. It's surprisingly resilient in a number of ways, but obviously much worse against counter spells, much worse against like if your opponent has Leyline of Sanctity, it's hard to beat it. Coffers is tier one now. It used to not be tier one, but the one ring just gives it that draw power that it didn't used to have. And then in combination with Shieldred is also really good. Copycat. Copycat sucks. Any copycat deck is usually just elementals, but with copycat in it. And the copycat combo itself is bad. It requires playing a three mana planeswalker that can get, that doesn't protect itself. It doesn't re have removal, doesn't draw cards that can just get killed by any aggro it doesn't even particularly have that high loyalty, so it can get burned out. And then you need to resolve Felidar Guardian the next turn. And the moment you play Sahili, it's a heads up to your opponent. Hey, look out for Felidar next turn. And when you actually try to go off with the Felidar combo, any instant speed burn, even burn that does one damage, stops the combo. Creativity, tier one. DNT, it depends on the exact build, but I would call DNT tier three. You need a very specific curve out of usually land hate with Leonin Arbiter. And if you don't have that curve out, then it's not good enough. You have like all sorts of cards that are only good against some decks and not others. There are some decks that aren't even playing fetch lands or they're on the plan. They just fetch before you even get Arbiter down or you play Thalia and then the Thalia isn't effective against what you're playing against. And sometimes your opponent even can get away with only having one or two lands to play most of their spells. Death Shadow, Death Shadow is tier two. And it's, again, it's tier two for the same reason Boomer Jund is tier two. It's just a step below Scam or Murktide. It's doing what those decks are doing, but worse. Devoted Druid? Devoted Druid is tier 2.5. The meta is really hostile. There's a lot of really cheap removal going around in most decks, and it's hard to stick the Devoted Druid. Now, let me think about this. It's definitely better than Boggles, so maybe it's tier two. 
it does have those games where you just go turn two druid your opponent doesn't have an answer and then you win but it also requires assembling multiple pieces it requires playing a two mana creature that dies to basically every removal spell and then that creature has to survive the turn cycle and then you need a the card that's going to give you infinite mana and the card that's going to be the payoff so it is a three card combo although it's more resilient with things like coco tyvar tyvar was a huge boon to the deck dice factory is tier two and it's the same issue where it's a powerful deck but it's just worse than green tron zoo same deal tier two worse than burn uh dredge i would put dredge in tier three at this point the format is so much faster there are zero mana endurances in decks and just the old plan of like oh i i bolt you with my chills or you know i bring back a bunch of three threes just doesn't hold up there's plenty of matches where you can even go like dredge put two amalgams and an arc amoeba in play and then your opponent has like a 4-4 double striking fury and you can't even attack them and it doesn't have a good recursive engine if you dredge and you mill stuff over and you hit like chills and amalgams it's just a one-off thing it doesn't keep going e-tron same deal tier two it's just worse than regular tron elementals tier one multiple configurations of the deck but the deck is just packing so much value in it, it has so many things that just draw cards get mana off of omnath etc etc has plenty of removal that deals with a bunch of stuff it can sideboard into counter spells if it needs to deal with uh, stack based combo decks and the like delighted halfling was a really big upgrade elves 2.5 again the format's too hostile especially when scam and fury is all over the place in the top tables enchantress same thing enchantress got a lot worse in particular because of bow masters every the whole enchantress's entire game plan is to draw multiple cards off of scythus and enchantress's presence and when bow masters just kills you when you do that and picks scythus off as well it gets much lower on the totem pole espergorios tier two really powerful but it requires again you have to assemble multiple pieces your opponent can't have graveyard hate your opponent can't have a way to kill the creature that you reanimate you have to be able to do it in time uh gifts storm f tier gift storm is just completely obsoleted at this point it's so incredibly slow so easily disrupted by a million things and it's worse than just breach combos which are essentially like all the other storm decks are oftentimes just breach decks and they're better than it so no reason to play gift storm anymore sorry storm players all right then we have the glimpse of tomorrow deck so there's the combo version and then there's the elemental version so the combo version is like tier three you have to get so lucky hitting stuff with it you have to be able to curve out you have to be able to have things that put multiple more permanents into play like rift sower wave sifter colony garden etc and then sometimes you just brick and you don't hit anything good or what your opponent has is better than what you have elementals is the same deal it is a little better in that when you when your cascade is shut down or when you don't cascade into good stuff your spells are more castable you're playing things like fable the mirror breaker omnath etc so you have alternative things to do besides just cascade but it's still just fundamentally bad you're just spinning the roulette wheel and hitting random stuff and you never know what you're gonna hit a bit awkward that your budget decks video recommends gift storm well it was that video was before the current meta that we're in goblins is tier two it's actually pretty good but it again has the problem of it's a combo that entirely revolves around creatures that can all be killed by basically most removal in the format still pretty good but not at the top tier grinding breach same deal tier two it's another breach deck it has pretty good value it got better with the ring still is a deck that relies on artifacts or not artifact a deck that relies on artifacts of the graveyard and urza saga so it gets hated out by artifact hate gets hated out by graveyard hate gets hated out by things that just kill emery and ragavan still pretty good not top tier hammer obviously top tier heartless summoning deck tier three there's just no good configuration for this deck so heartless summoning and brought back are fundamentally just good powerful cards but the problem is the creatures that are around them and whether you're on like the mold Rifter version or something else it is so inconsistent heliod company tier two heliod company used to it well so at the time that heliod company became a deck it was the best deck in modern then modern horizons got printed and prismatic ending meant that heliod now got killed by lots of main deck removal also force of vigor but that doesn't really matter now there's even more hostile removal to it however rosy cotton in lord of the rings gave you the secondary combo in scurry oak and there's now many more combinations of combos that you can use to win that are all cocoable problem is 
you still have this issue of Bowmasters running around screwing your combos over. So Rosy Cotton's a 1-1, gets killed by Bowmasters. Spike Feeder, although not a 1-1, you do have to drop it down to one counter in order to trigger the Heliod, at which point your opponent can respond with Bowmasters to kill Spike Feeder. Oftentimes the same deal with Walking Ballista. So it's still pretty good, but Bowmasters along with other removal that's instant speed that kits anything like Leyline Binding is keeping it down out of the top tier. It's got the same kind of issues as the uh, food deck. Hollow Vine, garbage, absolute garbage, completely just coin flip, who knows what you're going to hit deck. And that might have been acceptable back when things like Bloodgast were good, but nowadays it's terrible. And it's especially terrible when you're trying to cast cards like Burning Inquiry and Goblin Lore that draw you three and four cards in the Bowmaster meta. Humans, 2.5, it's the same issue. It's an aggro deck that's just not fast enough anymore, and... It has some stacks elements in like Thalia, but mostly it doesn't. And a lot of the cards that used to be good in humans, like Reflector Mage and Mantis Rider, are just not good enough anymore. Infect, probably tier 2.5. Again, having a bunch of X1 creatures that die to Bowmasters is really rough. And as we saw when we played it, if you're playing three colors in order to play Phyrexian Crusader, then the mana gets a lot worse. But even if you were playing only two colors, then you're still relying a lot on Phyrexian Crusader. And also, all of your mana dorks also die to Bowmasters. Inverter? Inverter's tier 3. I think that, so all of the current versions of Inverter, whenever anyone plays them, they're basically like blue-black control with the Inverter combo as their win condition, and I think that's probably the wrong way to build them. I think you probably should build them as a all, more all-in on the combo, because the control elements are just not good enough when eight of your cards are Inverter and Oracle. So I switched it up to be more of a like ramp combo version. Let me see if I can display this. So more of like a just get mono rocks going as fast as possible. Try to just like thought seize and inquisition your opponent's uh, interaction out of the way so that you can get inverter and oracle down as quickly as you can. Obviously, I'd have to play test this, but I would go more for more towards something like this rather than the more like controlling version that's playing cards like consider and opt and whatnot. Jeskai Ascendancy, same deal. It's like in tier 2.5. It's still powerful for what it's doing, but... Jeskai Ascendancy now getting hit by Force of Vigor and Leyline Binding and all the rest, having Endurance to take uh, Fate Stitcher away, makes it a lot worse. It's slower. It can die before you are able to combo off. Uh, Blood Sun deck. So uh, Jeskai Lotus Field, tier two. Jeskai Lotus Field is surprisingly really good. It does suffer from getting hit by Blood Moon, and it, it, it does also have problems with inconsistencies, but... First of all, Bowmasters is actually not that bad against it because most of the cards, it does have Valakut Awakening into Fairy, but it also has Memory Deluge, so it can afford to draw things. It also has eight Elementals in Fury and Solitude to kill it, plus other burn spells to get rid of Bowmasters. The main issues it has are beating Blood Moon and actually assembling its like big late game mana plus card advantage engine before it gets run over by aggro decks. Sack deck. Sack deck is pretty bad now, and that's just because... Again, like you used to be able to get away with playing Bloodgast and cards like that. And now those cards are just so much worse. Uh, Jun Saga is in tier two. Same kind of thing. It's another like value deck that's playing Ren and Six with the Sagas. And it's pretty good when it works. But when it runs into Blood Moon, it has problems. And it's again, just if you're looking for a all the value deck, Elementals does a better job. Kieran Stacks. Kieran Stacks is basically on the same level as DNT. You need to assemble the specific combo, and even then, sometimes it's either not fast enough or not good enough. Koldotha Red, Tier 2. Again, you either blitz your opponent out with the Bushwhacker plan, or sometimes you're playing Goblin Grenade or Shrapnel Blast, or you don't. And also, Fury is really bad when you're trying to put a bunch of X1s in play. It's, it got much worse with Bowmasters, obviously. When you play, you know, eat, eat one of your artifacts, put three Goblin Tokens into play, and then you attack with those Goblins, and they go... Bowmasters, kill one of them, block two others to totally negate your Bushwhacker turns. It gets way worse. It's actually probably more like a tier 2.5 deck as long as Bowmasters is running around, but if you hit non-Bowmaster decks, then it's a tier 2 deck. So it depends. Lantern, same deal. Without Opal, it's obviously a lot slower, and of course, artifacts, especially in Snaring Bridge, get killed by so many more pieces of removal than they normally do. However, Urza Saga does make up for a lot of problems it has, including finding the mill lock in the first place and giving it an alternate uh, pathway to victory when you can't mill your opponent out living end tier one magda changelings tier three 
I don't know. I think it could be better than what it is now, but it's just like the fundamental part of this combo. It requires usually three different pieces to actually win the game. And it's slow. And all of its cards are X1 creatures that die to Bowmasters. And then all of its other cards are just like slow, clunky, and bad. So I think Magda fundamentally is good, but it doesn't have the shell around it to be. Martyr proc, tier three. When we played this deck, it turned out that everything in the deck that was actually good were the cards that were just generic value cards, like Elish Norn, Solitude, Ranger Captain, and the actual martyr proc plan of Martyr of Sands and looping it to gain life. That plan sucked. So it's pretty bad. Merfolk? What do you guys think? Is Merfolk tier one or tier two? It's a pretty aggressive deck that also randomly has land hate to beat decks like Tron, and it's hard to block. It also gets to run Force of Negation and Subtlety when it, when it wants to. I think it's a tier two deck. I think it's just shy of tier one. These, by the way, are not in any particular order, like the, the tier two decks. It's just, I'm dropping them into tier two. Uh, Mill. Mill is also tier two. Same kind of deal. It's kind of, Mill's kind of like worse burn or worse control. I am not sure I would put Titan in tier one, honestly. Are you insane? Titan is busted. Titan's completely ridiculous. Mono green devotion, tier 2.5. And the issue is, first of all, it's just worse than amulet. It's basically like it's a ramp deck, but then why aren't you just playing amulet? The second part of it is that there's a bunch of ramp cards, but then there actually aren't that many payoffs. There's fewer payoffs than Amulet Titan, for example. So sometimes you just, you get, you just get stranded not being able to do anything. And in Amulet, Primeval Titan is its own win condition. Primeval Titan just goes and assembles whatever you need to win the game. In Mono Green Devotion, you're, the cards you're playing are like Cityscape Leveler or Ulamog, where if they get dealt with, then you just have nothing. Mono Red Midrange, Tier 2. Has a bunch of powerful cards, Ragavan, Fury, Karn, One Ring. Still not as good as Scam, though. Ponza. Ponza's basically in the same bracket as uh, Seismic Assault. It's better than All Will Be One because it's not playing that garbage combo, but has the same issues. Like, if Blood Moon just isn't effective, then it's much worse. It's playing a bunch of, like, mid-rangey cards, which essentially outside of Fury aren't that good. You, you can play Karn, you can play Chandra, but the rest of the deck is not supporting it that well. Also, Arbor Elf got way worse after Bowmasters. Merktide Tier 1. I understand that it's sliding down in popularity, I guess because it has certain bad matchups against things, but it's still a Tier 1 deck. When's the next ban update? It is on the 7th, so it's next Monday. Or it's next... Yeah, it's, it should be next Monday. Neobrand. Neobrand is Tier 3. Neobrand is obviously a deck that can just win on turn 2. And if your opponent can't interact with you, sometimes you just win on turn 2. Other times your opponent has a counter spell and you lose to a counter spell. Sometimes you Neobrand into, you Neoform into Gristlebrand and you go to draw your first seven and your opponent Leyline Bindings it or Solitudes it. And then you don't have a Gristlebrand in play anymore. Real big issues. Oops all spells, same kind of problem. Like these glass cannon combo decks that are just so easily disrupted by a million things. Significant problems. Maybe it's tier 2.5. It is better than something like Neoform, but it's still kind of bad. Oh, I think this is Ponza, actually. Maybe I put Ponza on the list twice, because Chandra should be Ponza. Oh, Chandra is Mono Red Prison. So this is Ponza. So Mono Red Prison, yeah, same thing. It's just worse than Mono Red Midrange or Scam or other decks in the same ilk. Uh, Prison Tron. Prison Tron is basically down here. It's another Tron deck, but it's not only worse than Green Tron, it's also worse than Dice Factory. Prowess. I think Prowess is in Tier 2. It's, again, it's worse than Burn, but it's still really good. Reanimator. I'm shocked by how much worse Reanimator is than Gorio's Vengeance. I guess it's the like I don't know what it is. Is it because that is it because both decks can play Ephemerate and the Evoke Elemental, so I'm not really sure why. It just feels like it's better to Gorios and Atraxa than it is to Persistent Archon. So I would put Reanimator in like tier 2.5. Rhinos tier 1. Rot Priest Storm. We didn't actually play this deck. I'm assuming it's pretty bad though. Another glass cannon deck that's disrupted by a, a, any removal spell. Safi Rallier, same thing. You're doing another creature combo deck, but it's worse than Sam. It's worse than Heliod. It's worse than Yogmoth. Right now, it lacks a, a it lacks a really good piece to really put everything together. So the problem is that in order to actually win the game, you not only, you need Safi Rally, you need Safi. Renegade Rallier, a Sack Outlet, but that Sack Outlet then needs to also kill your opponent. So if you just have like Viscerous here, sure, you get to scry your whole deck, but you don't actually win. The only 
sack outlet that also wins is altar of dementia and altar of dementia is not findable off of anything basically the only thing that finds it is i think trophy mage one of those mages that finds artifacts but you don't want to play that card hardened scales is tier two it's like just shy of being good enough to be in tier one it's almost in tier one i think the major thing that cripples it is force of vigor and Karn the Great Creator is everywhere, but it is really good. It's just just barely shy of tier one. Scam, tier one. Scam's probably the best deck in the format because turn one double grief you is good against literally everything. It also just kills you super fast with Fury, Ragavan, and Blood Moon's a bunch of decks. I would say of the decks, it's probably Scam at first and then Amulet in second. Can we actually say tier zero? It's not tier zero. It's not like 100% obviously the best deck so head and shoulders above everything else. It's just really, really good. Force of Vigor does nothing to scales. Mm, I don't know about that. Blows up hardened scales, both Ozoliths, Urza's Saga. Like, okay, sure, yeah. Ravager can sack things and uh, Hangerback Walker is good against it, but it blows out everything else in the deck. Scape Shift is like tier 2.5, maybe even worse. It's again, it's just a worse version of Amulet. It's slower, it's less consistent. In response, they just go wild. That it's, that assumes they already have everything. When they're just setting up, and their turn is like, turn one, land, harden scales, turn two, Urza Saga, and then you go force, blow up, Urza Saga, and harden scales. Or maybe you go like, harden scales, and then you play like a Ballista with two counters on it, and they go force, blow both of those up. And you go, okay, response, shoot you for two damage. And then you don't have a Ballista or scales anymore. Uh, Shamans, Shamans was shockingly bad. I thought it would do better, but... It's probably like F tier. The car, it's just so bad. There's obviously the times when you you get the perfect curve and you go like Harmonic Prodigy into Collected Company and you get Rage Forger and put counters on stuff and curve out and kill your opponent. But man, the times when that doesn't happen or when you brick on Coco or when you're just too slow or when your Harmonic Prodigy gets killed by removal, so bad. Shape Anu. Shape Anu is kind of like tier 2.5. Shape Anu is basically elementals, but with the Shape Anu package, which means... Your mana base is worse, you're playing Shape Anu, and you're not playing other cards that you could be playing if you weren't playing Shape Anu. Slivers. Slivers is also probably around tier 2.5. It's actually a pretty solid aggro deck, but it has the same problems as like all the other tribal decks. It's not fast enough, gets killed by Fury, etc, etc. Song of Creation Storm is probably also in around tier 2.5, and a big contributor to that is once again... The deck's whole combo is drawing a million cards, and in Bowmaster's meta, that kills you. Bant Spirits, I gotta be honest, Bant Spirits is garbage. It just doesn't have this, it just does not have the same staying power as it used to. Basically, none of the cards in the deck are good enough anymore. And it has no, like, grindy, even a deck like Bant Company at least has the, the Soul Herder package. Where's Bant Company? Right here, yeah. At least, Bant Company at least has, like, Eternal Witness Time Warp Loops. Spirits doesn't do anything good. Sunforger. Sunforger is in tier 2.5. Sometimes you kill your opponent with Sunforger, but sometimes you just don't. And then it's just a worse version of Hammer. Uh, Taking Turns deck, tier 2. Tameshi Bloom. Tameshi's probably in tier 2.5 as well. It has a lot of vulnerabilities. It loses to Graveyard Hate, Artifact Hate, anything that kills creatures. And although it does have some resiliency... That it has not really gained anything from the newer sets, but it's lost in terms of other things speeding up and getting more efficient. Uh, Teamer Wreck. Teamer Wreck is awful. Teamer Wreck is basically a worse Jeskai Lotus Field because in Jeskai Lotus Field, your untap engine is to fairy drawing you cards and untapping Lotus Field. And in Teamer Wreck, you have Wilderness Reclamation untapping your lands and then not drawing you cards. So then unless you also have other things going for you, the untapped engine doesn't do anything. And it's slow. It doesn't even have like turn two, play Lotus Field with flagstones, get up to five mana. Timeless Amulet, basically Timeless Amulet's tier two. It's just worse version of regular Amulet. Uh, Blue Tron is garbage. It's worse than every other Tron variant and it's worse than every other version of Control. Why? I don't know why anyone would play it. Regular Tron, tier one. Twiddle Storm. It's probably tier 2.5. It's got like the same kind of problems as Tameshi. You need a lot of things going right for you. You need to curve out properly. You can get run over by aggro before you go off. Graveyard hate screws you. Uh, let's see. If Coffers is here, what does Shieldred represent? Oh, I think Shieldred is blue-black control. Blue-black control is probably tier one. 
because of the ring. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Unctus Orb combo is tier 2.5. It's got the same issues where like lots of things hate it out. It can, it needs all the things to come together simultaneously in order to actually win. When it gets going, it's really good. And it also has the, again, the problem of a bunch of the combo relies on looting. And then in the Bowmaster's meta, that's terrible. Urza Thopter combos is a tier two deck. It's pretty good. Obviously has vulnerabilities to artifact and graveyard hate, but overall pretty good. Not tier one though. Blue white control. So it seems like blue white control has really taken a backseat to blue black control. And that's probably because it can't make as good of use of the ring as Shieldred does. Plus the format is so fast that Teferi Hero of Dominaria is actually not as good as he used to be, shockingly. And it's better to play Subtlety than it is to play like Wandering Emperor. So outside of three fairy, the white is not adding that much value. I'm not exactly sure what it is that's putting blue black over blue white. So blue white is somewhere around tier one or two. It's probably tier two though, but it could easily bounce around back into tier one at any moment. Uh, Vivian combo, I think it was better than what we actually showed, but obviously it's it's got all the same fragilities as other combo decks that are trying to assemble a bunch of creatures. Walls is also the same deal. Walls is also particularly bad against Bowmasters, Scam in general. So put it in tier 2.5. And then Yogmoth, of course, is in tier 1. And then obviously, if you've been paying attention, the one deck not on the list is the Flump combo. And clearly that's S tier. I mean, just head and shoulders above everything. So, I mean, didn't even feel the need to include it on the list because everyone knows it's just the best, right? But anyways, that is the end of the Modern Marathon. We've been through all the wheel decks. We've finished ranking them all. It's over. It's time to bid you guys adieu. So for everybody who joined me during all of these streams over the entire month, thank you. I hope you enjoyed themselves. Thank you to everyone who subbed and followed. And of course, thank you to Collector Legion for providing the initial ticks for entry fees and then letting me borrow cards for uh, when the all access pass expired. And I will see you guys back here next time for, uh, you know, maybe the Pioneer Wheel, maybe something else, maybe a game that's not magic, who knows? So that'll be the end of that. Goodbye.